Welcome back to Novel Idea. I'm Dia, and this is Poppy, and we're gonna do Friday Reads. We're gonna see if Poppy will let me record. I don't know if she will or not. Can you let me record? Can you lie down? Lie down and be a good girl? Maybe. We'll see. Hi, welcome to Friday Reads <laughs> and uh, talk about what I've been reading. Um, okay, so first book that I completed this week was Over the Woodward Wall, which I do not remember who it's by and uh, I have already taken it back to the library so I don't have anything to hold up so I will put a picture. Um, it was an 85%, it was a B. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything, you know, to write home about. <laughs> um, it's about two children, a boy and a girl, who um, do not know each other and go over a wall into another realm and they meet each other in that realm. And after meeting each other, go on an adventure to try to get home. And all's well that ends well. That's, that's over the Woodward Wall. It is, um, I mean, there are creepy things. There are some horrific things that happen, I would classify this as like a, a middle grade uh, soft horror novel um, because the, the things that happen, at least to me, <laughs> who is a, a wimp, I will admit, uh, they, were, they were scary. So Over the Woodward Wall, 85% um, B, and next, um, I read Age of Swords, also back at the library already. Uh, I should have recorded this while I still had them. I'm, I feel bad. Um, Age of Swords is the second book in the Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. And um, I read Age of Myth last month and thoroughly loved it. And so thought that I would read Age of Swords this month. There are still four more books, I think, in this uh, Age of the, or Legends of the First Empire. So Michael J. Sullivan wrote the Ryria Chronicles and the Ryria something else, I think. Um, and those are very well known and are all over booktube, um, at least in the fantasy booktube arena they are. Um, but I haven't heard as much about the Legends of the First Empire and I am absolutely loving it. So if the Ryria Chronicles and the Ryria whatever it is um, <laughs> are anything like Age of Myth, Age of Swords, Age of War, all of those that are in this series. Um, wow, is all I can say. It, it's, it's amazing. So in the first book, we learn that there are gods and there are not gods. And the not gods, us, <laughs> um, have for hundreds and hundreds of years um, served the gods and stayed, you know, in their little area. And the gods have decided that they know that we've become too plentiful and they need to get rid of us. Only thing is, is that one of us accidentally kills one of them and we find out that the gods are not gods. So war ensues and other adventures also. The characters in this book are just, 
fascinating. They are, um, there's depth to them. They're, they are very believable, very real. They, um, the way that they speak to one another, the way that they think about each other, the way that they um, go about life um, is, is very easy to um, relate to. And so um, I'm enjoying this and I loved Age of Swords as much as I loved Age of Myth. Um, it's different and, um, and there are things that I like better about each one of the books, but overall, just an A, strong, strong A read, 96 and a half percent is what it ended up with in my totals. So yeah, Age of Swords, Michael J. Sullivan's second book in the Legends of the First Empire. And then my next book, this one I have, I can hold it up, was Eight Cousins. And this one is by Louisa May Alcott. This isn't a very pretty edition of it, but it's the one that I have and I love it. I actually have another edition, but it's even more beat up than this one because my kids read it when they were growing up. Um, so Eight Cousins is about an orphan girl who uh, goes to live with her uncle, but her uncle is away on business, and so she ends up living with her aunts. And um, the ones that she lives with are spinster aunts, but they, um, are on the same hill in the same city as aunts that are not spinsters, that have families. And she has been an only child her whole life and has grown up pretty isolated. And um, her baptism into family is to be surrounded by seven boys who are all cousins and um, all of these aunts and uncles. And she, uh, she doesn't know how to act at first. And so it's just this kind of coming of age story about this young girl whose name is Rose and um, being with her cousins and what they have to teach her and how they treat her and how she learns to be a part of a family. And so a reread for me, but still an A plus read. I absolutely love this book. This is probably my favorite Louisa May Alcott book. I just love it. So it's funny it's poignant, it's sad, it's, yeah, there's so many things about it that um, are just so worth the read, you guys. So yeah, Eight Cousins, Louisa May Alcott, strong, strong A+, 98, 99%. I feel bad about giving anything 100, so <laughs> anyway, Eight Cousins. And then the next one that I read is also already back at the library. So I'll have to put a picture up of it also. I should know who this book is by. In fact, I think I have a copy of it, but um, I just saw it as I was walking into the library and I went, oh, I haven't read that in a while. I should probably do that. But the reason why I should know is because this is the very, very first book that I ever read to myself after I learned to read. And it's called Ch Child of the Silent Night. And this is about a girl who is blind, deaf, and mute. And it's, it's the story of her growing up. Her name is Laura. Um, it's the story of her learning to um, interact with her world and 
all the hardships of getting there. And I think that the thing that hits me the most about this story is that, you know, I've read quite a few books about people that have lost their memory or that, um, you know, something happens to them where they don't have any memories or their short-term memory goes, but they've got long-term memory from, you know, something that before something happened. Um, and just who we are as human beings as a result of not having those memories, that is so commonly explored right now. But it's not explored from a, a, the side of who are we as a human when we don't have senses, when we don't have anything to tie a memory to because it's not something that we've seen, it's not something that we've heard, it's not something that has been spoken by us. And so when you only have your sense of taste and your sense of touch, how do you communicate those memories and who does that create you as a person to be or, or you as a human? So anyway, just an, just an interesting um, thought. Um, I gave it an A minus. Um, 91%. Yeah. Just a, a, another poignant story and A minus 91%. And then I read, I read Guy Gabriel Kay's The Summer Tree. And I'm not totally sure that I understand this book even quite yet. This one um, had some moments in it that were very um, very scary, very tense. And um, again, it's about a group of friends, sort of, mostly, I would, I would call them friends, that um, leave this time for another um, and are supposed to be intricate in the in being saviors of the other place, of the other world. I'm gonna move on in this series because I am curious and I wanna know if things become more clear. It, it's definitely fantasy, um, although the, when they leave, they, they leave our present day, our present age, um, to travel to this other world and like I said, I, I just, I, I still have so many questions. So hopefully I get questions answered. I gave it a, a minus B plus because I was curious. I was um, engaged. I, I, it kept pulling me back into the story, but I left the book. When I closed it, I was like, what did I just read? I, I just, I, I still need to process. So may increase in its grade as I read through the series, but for right now, A minus B plus, kind of an 89, 90% maybe. So that one. And then I finished up Getting to Know Jesus by George MacDonald. This is everything I wanted it to be, so I'm perfectly happy with it, but I'm not gonna give a nonfiction a grade because I feel like um, it's the what I would be grading is the author, not not the actual content. <laughs> um, and so let me just say that that George MacDonald always makes me think, and he asks questions. Um, that I normally wouldn't ask and he um, presents um, subjects in a way that I have not thought about them before and so I enjoyed it I just I really loved it and I'm really thankful that I read it and um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that and then the next book 
is Flower Fables by Louisa May Alcott. So I, let me, let me show you a little closer here. Um, by Louisa May Alcott. Yeah. It's a beautiful cover. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's the first Louisa May Alcott book that I have read that I have given anything less than an A to. And so this is a B plus for me. This is 88%. Um, I, I think it's just the shortness of the tales. I wish that this whole thing was just one fable. Um, they were cute. Uh, they were a little scary sometimes. <laughs> they were um, beautifully told, but not, it, it didn't feel satisfying. So B plus 88% Flower Fables, Louisa May Alcott. So that's that one. Okay. And then today, early this morning, I finished up Engines of Empire. And I can't remember who that one's by either. It's like RC something, I think. Um, yeah, so I finished that one up this morning and I really liked it. I gave this an A minus. Um, it's a, a 92%, 91 in there. And um, this is about, um, it's another political saga. It's about, it's about the families who have abilities. They have their own houses. Th within that house, it, and I don't mean like physical house, I mean like it's the house of you know, rain or the house of, of iron or, you know, whatever. So the houses have, um, the, they have certain powers that help their empire. And this particular one, um, I think it's a series. I think this is, is going to be a series. There's no other books out yet, so I'm hopeful that this is going to be a series. House that is the main focus of this book is the one that rules the empire, and they are also the engines of the empire. So they have the ability through a special kind of rock that has metals within it um, to power things to m move the kingdom, basically, to move the empire. It is a, a story of um, rebellion and it's usurping. And so um, I'm sure that the next one is going to be more of a war. Um, this one was kind of the build up to that and um, loved a couple of the characters in this. Um, there are secrets yet to be um, unfolded, uh, brought into the open, and it leaves us very much wanting another book. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will not forget the name of the author the next time I talk about this series, um, but it's it's not it's not sticking with me right now. So I will put it up here somewhere. And um, so yeah, that's all the books that I read this week. And what am I reading still? So I'm still reading Ninth Rain by Jen Williams, and you can see I'm almost. I don't have a lot of it left. I'm taking my time with it. I really am enjoying it. Um, it is seriously just so different than anything I've ever read before, um, but different in all the right ways. And I'm, I'm and I'm loving it. I am loving it. So there's that. 
And then I'm also reading Under the Lilacs by Louisa May Alcott. And um, I only have just a little of this one left as well. And I've been doing this one at night after I finished Flower Fables. I started this one at night. And uh, this one is much more of a children's novel than any of her other stories are. Um, this one is just cozy cute. It's so, so sweet. Um, it's about, it's, it's about a boy who, um, has a dog and, and about entering into family and, um, finding it's, it's, it's very, um, early days Americana. I just, I, anyway, it's, it's just really, really, uh, wonderful so far. And, um, and I'll finish that soon, I'm sure. So after I finish these two, cause I only have just a little bit in both, I will probably go on to, um, I picked this up at the library, the Atlas six, and I'm looking forward to that. So that's probably going to be what I pick up next. And then I also have this one from the library. This is um, Named of the Dragon by Susanna Kearsley. And uh, Susanna Kearsley always writes kind of a, a historical timeline and a present day timeline, and somehow they blend together. And there's always a little bit of, um, magical, I wouldn't call it magical realism, but maybe it is. Maybe there's another word for that. I don't know, but there's always something that happens that takes this present day and puts it into, puts the people from this present day into the past. But I enjoy her writing a lot. Um, there's usually some sort of a little uh, romance in there too, but it's not the main focus of the story usually, and it's um, pretty well handled. So anyway, those are probably what I will go on to next, and I'm really hankering for another nonfiction, so I need to find one to read a, a, a nonfiction, and, um, and then maybe another classic, but I don't know yet. So we will see. Anyway, you guys, thanks a lot for joining me and, um, uh, and Poppy back here. <laughs> it's just being a lazy dog. And, um, I hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, we just got our couch and our little apartment is coming together. And I'm hopefully going to be putting together bookcases this week end and I just hope you guys have a wonderful one too. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these. If you liked it, subscribe if you want to and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye. Did you just burp at me? <laughs> I love you too, sweetheart. Can you say bye? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>